Hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to speak to anybody um, on this channel that's maybe following this channel that has recently left the formal church. I know there's one subscriber that has said that or anybody that ever comes to this channel and has recently left the, um, the church system. Um, so I just wanted to speak to you a little bit about that because I'm sometimes very concerned. I think about people coming out. Um, for me, it happened many years ago already in 2011. So it's very, very long ago. And But I know how difficult the journey is and how many years it takes. And I'm also aware that many, many people are coming out. And so I just want to touch on that in this video and also share with you a playlist of a brother who actually deals with people who have recently come out of the church system. Um, and I think he does a good job of it. Now, this brother is called Ronnie Hurst. That's also his channel name. And I've made a little playlist um, of four of his videos that I found particularly helpful. You can find that playlist on my playlist. There are four of the videos I put in there. It's under the title, Come Out of Her, My People. Um, Came Out of the Church System, Where Do We Go From Here? And um, he made this video, I left the church system, now what? I like the way he speaks about this. He's a no-nonsense guy. I'm not saying I agree with every single thing he says, um, but I, I think it is a good channel to, to recommend for anybody that's recently come out of the church system because you really need some support it really helps to have somebody just speak it like it is you know um, say the things that you've been seeing out loud that is really really helpful now on my channel I don't really offer that type of support or speak about coming out of the church system because it's been so long ago that you know I've sort of gone beyond needing to speak about that. I'm more in the stage of waging war against these Zionists, you know. But basically my channel deals with the six milk doctrines, um, which you find in the beginning of Hebrews 6. And so you'll see my channel is about Judaizing. It's about understanding the very, very important thing that we are not saved by our works and at the moment I've been spending a lot of time regarding different doctrines um, I try and show the spiritual gist of what things mean um, so you know to to really understand the things I say you basically would need a very good grounding in understanding that you are not saved by works or maybe if you are struggling with that, you can learn yeah, also about Judaizing. So my channel really is for everybody. But, you know, if you if you are still hurting, and so I really would recommend you find people online that can also speak to you on that side. One really needs to talk about it with those that understand. And it's not good to speak to family that are still in the church and try and convince them. It's much better for you to work through this yourself, get healing yourself. Um, and we are very fortunate to have the internet with people who who come who've come out of the the church system. The only pitfall I would warn you against is channels that sort of don't move beyond that. They they keep harping on the errors in the church and they don't move beyond that and that's also not healthy and you know good it might be for a while for you to just see these things but you've also got to move beyond that it's almost like when a woman is has been in an abusive relationship she she may need a time to just speak about the things and how about how, about how awful it is but 
if she is to actually get beyond that, she's actually got to stop focusing on what the abuser did and actually get her life back. Now, that's basically where I am is, yeah, you know, trying to help uh, people to to realize that that you need to be taught of God yourself. You cannot rely on men and their doctrines because they are going to hurt you, you know? So my focus is on, on moving beyond that. But I just wanted to give you this website and there may be more out there. I don't know, but I like this Ronnie's uh, website. I listened to quite a few of his videos and I I like the way he speaks and how he says it as it is. And I, so I just wanted to recommend it in case it could be of help for you or for you to realize there may be others that have gone before you that you can find people that have left the church system. Um, but as I say, be careful that they don't take you from, as they say, from the pot to the fire, you know, just from the one place to the next place that's going to just do the same to you. Um, in this video, he says, take a break from the whole thing. And this is what I would also agree with, is don't try and keep finding the perfect church online now. Don't bind yourself too quickly to somebody you find that's helpful. But realize how blessed you are to actually search the scriptures for yourself. Milk Doctrine 3 and 4 is called Baptisms and Laying on of Hands. Now, most people would think you need to study all about the different baptisms in the Bible, when Peter baptized and when John the Baptist baptized and things like that. And laying on of hands, we know, you know, in the charismatic church, especially they do that. They lay on hands for healing or for passing spiritual gifts. So many of us are aware of that. Or it could be the laying on of hands in the sense of ordaining somebody for the ministry. But really what I found is the understanding, the deeper understanding of baptisms and laying on of hands. Because the scripture very clearly says there is only one baptism. In Ephesians 4, we read that. We read it says, speaking of the unity in the body of Christ, it specifically says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. Speaking of the unity in the spirit, but specifically saying there's one baptism. So this begs the question, why in Hebrew 6 does it speak of baptisms, which in the Hebrew refers to the different washings? Um, and, you know, in the history of the churches, they, there was great strife about what form water baptism needs to take. And there was even people being put to death because, for example, the Anabaptist believed that you had to be baptized as an adult, whereas the Roman church, as we know, they had the sprinkling of babies. There's all that, but it really isn't about that because the Bible clearly says there's only one baptism. So how do we understand that? Need Must we now go and study baptism and see which church does it right? No, you see, because the, the only baptism that really ma matters is the baptism of Christ, being baptized by his Holy Spirit. That is the one baptism that makes us all one. In the wonderful chapter of Galatians 3, it says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So we actually get spiritual baptisms. We can be baptized into Moses or baptized into Christ. So the Jewish people are baptized into Moses. We read that in 1 Corinthians 10. It speaks there of the fathers and how they were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, which basically speaks of a baptism. Um, now, people would think it's the crossing of the Red Sea, and they would think of a, a physical 
sort of a baptism, but it's really speaking of a spiritual baptism because the things that happen physically are all types and shadows and patterns of spiritual realities. And so we see here uh, they were baptized unto Moses, which is contrasted to us being baptized into Christ. This word um, can also mean into into so they were baptized into Moses but even though they were baptized into Moses it says here they drank of the same spiritual drink um, and that spiritual rock which was Christ so even though they were baptized into Moses it was still connected to Christ so my point here is baptisms actually you basically get two baptisms at at the two extremes, you can be baptized into Moses being the law or grace. So it says the law came by, by Moses, but then there was the revelation of grace and truth by Jesus Christ. So really, there's only one baptism that can make us one so that we can say there's one baptism. The ultimate baptism of all the different baptisms, being spiritually baptized into Moses, this, the baptism of John, the baptism of the apostles, the baptism of all the different churches and denominations, the ultimate fulfillment of that is to be baptized into Christ. The same regarding laying on of hands. Now, laying on of hands basically is to... Um, ordain somebody or to give them a spiritual gift that's basically the reason it was given and we know that because of um, a passage regarding Paul and Timothy that speaks of this 2 Timothy 1 verse 6 we learn um, where Paul tells Timothy and he reminds them to stir up the gift of God which is in him by the putting on or the laying on of Paul's hands but even that is only a physical type of a spiritual reality. And that spiritual reality is that we are actually ordained by Christ and we are given the gift. The gift that comes by laying on of hands is the gift of the Holy Spirit that the Father gives us. So Christ baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. The Father gives us this gift. The scripture specifically says that. Um, and this happens by the laying on of hands. Now this laying on of hands, in a sense, may be somewhat a, a physical matter. For example, when you listen to videos of other brothers and sisters that share the word of God with you, in a sense, that's a spiritual laying on of hands. But again, the ultimate laying on of hands, the ultimate ordination is done by Jesus Christ. When we speak of baptism and laying on of hands, it means to be taught of God. And so basically where you are, if you've left the church system, is you are here. This is where you are now being taken out of these systems and being taught of God himself um, and being ordained of the Lord Jesus to bear much fruit because it's him that ordains us. Um, we, we cannot really be ordained of men. That leads to, to believing in doctrines of men and even if those men are, are sincere, they can be deceived. So the only way when God calls you out of the system is to actually start to rely on being taught by Jesus Christ and by the Heavenly Father. And so it's actually very exciting. And so when I'm um, dealing with false doctrines in the church or struggling against the Zionism, what we are actually seeing is that we've grown beyond needing these um, milk doctrines, we start to understand them. In the church, they don't even, they basically just teach you to stop relying on your works. And many of them don't even do that. So I want to encourage you to trust the Father to teach you and to be taught of him 
rather than by all these pastors and inner system. In a sense, the church is for the Christian what the law of Moses used to be um, for the Hebrews. Paul called it a schoolmaster. And even though the law itself as was truly given by God, not as it was corrupted by men and more and more laws was added on. For example, Moses allowed them to divorce and there was all sorts of rules regarding that. So that was part of the law of Moses. But Jesus said it's not the law of God. It's not what God wanted. So there are many, many things in the Old Testament, for example, that have been that were added. Um, and the more you pack one law on top of another, the more this, you die spiritually because the letter kills us. The church has gone very much the same way. And so at the moment, um, as this brother also says, the church is entering judgment. And the all the dry branches that have been cut off from Christ, they are going to be burned. And this is a spiritual thing that is happening even now, you know. Um, but it does manifest on earth in, in all this chaos that we see. The, the Re reformation of Martin Luther actually moved the, the church just into this part from understanding the first two milk doctrines, but they still don't understand that all these doctrines and creeds can't teach you. You've got to take the Bible, pray to the Father, and be slowly taught of him. And you know, a great part of this whole coming out of the church and being taught of God is to be deprogrammed because of all brainwashing. So I always use the example of this huge old onion and you've got to take off um, all the layers of the onion. Usually when you just take off the first layer and you leave the church system, it is such a mind-blowing thing, um, but you don't immediately realize what a long process of removing the layers and layers and layers of lies. And it's not just about lies. It's also about layers of understanding. So the more we walk with God, the more we study the scripture, the deeper we understand. And so it's a process of patient endurance. So even when you first come out of this church system, this Babylon the Great, um, which is, this brother says it's the Roman Catholic Church, but I actually believe the Pharisaic system actually gave birth to what became uh, the Catholic and the Eastern Church. Um, and there's a whole story about that I don't want to go into, but for us, she does feel like a mother because of the Reformation. So she actually, the, the true Babylon the Great, the way I understand it, is actually that system that Jesus overcame. But because of the fact that they didn't uh, accept Jesus as Messiah, a schism came, and from that came the Roman Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox Church. They were actually first a unity, and the Roman Catholic Church only came after about a thousand years. So, but nevertheless, it's all basically this Babylon the Great. So when you look at the church system, you really feel like John. You you sort of marvel. Um, firstly, you actually admire the system, but in the end, you just feel, you marvel that they are able to deceive men like that. I really couldn't almost believe my eyes at the level of deception and how the people go along with it. Now, that only happens when you receive the Holy Spirit and the veil gets removed so that you, you can see this. And when I first, you know, really started to study my Bible and after seeing, I just could see that something was terribly wrong in the churches. 
I also first basically admired the church, but there were things that were not adding up. And because I read my Bible quite a lot, at a certain point, um, I could see that it was not right, that was there. And that's really started my search. And when I actually left the church, when I, the Lord told me they're all like that, because I first tried to find different churches, but I sat in a church one day in another church and the Lord inside said to me, they're all like that, you know? So that's when I first actually accepted it and I left the church and then I started really seeing these things. And I felt like John, yeah, when he says, you know, I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it, it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I'd eaten it, my belly was bitter. And I so often felt like that. When I read things, I thought, yes, that's what I see. Um, you know, I'm not wrong. I'm seeing it right. I'm hearing right. But And it was so nice to find out the truth. But the reality that goes along with it was really bitter. So what I can tell you is there really is this feeling of joy, but at the same time, you go through such sorrow. And it's also difficult with your loved ones who maybe don't see. So my advice is, you know, make it a personal journey. You don't, don't fear and feel you must pull them out of the fire with you. You first, like this gentleman says in the video, calm down, you know, spend time with with God yourself. Make it about getting to know him um, better. And if you don't feel to do all sorts of doctrinal studies, don't do that. I also didn't initially. It, it was really about my relationship with the Lord and about him speaking with me and him healing all my hurts. And, and um, you know, getting to know him and and it was for many many years about me and my relationship with him and very very personal and then later on the interest came in really understanding doctrine so before you really know the scriptures very well there really is no point in studying this in time theology you really are only going to be deceived by all these end time theologies because you it's part of the milk doctrines but before you actually really understand that you cannot be saved by your works and before you really understand that the churches lie and deceive and that you need to be taught of God and have a good basis um, of being taught actually by Jesus and then also by the apostles through their writings. Only then will you be ready to actually understand end time theologies because that has got to do with deeply spiritual things called resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And the way that you've been taught about it is just not right. I'm not saying don't study in times theologies, but if you're not very grounded in the Bible so that you really know it, it's going to be more difficult. But let the Spirit of God lead. I can only advise you of the way it worked for me. Maybe now at the later stage, since many people have left, maybe you will learn faster. Maybe the process will speed up. So I'm not trying to tell you exactly how to go about it. I'm just saying to you, you know, have some mercy on yourself if you are newly outside the church and um, go, go slow. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Don't be fearful of the, this in times. Yes, something is happening, but I've said before, it's a process. It's not like the church makes it sound like this sudden thing where everything is just going to be mayhem. It's, it's a process. And in the end, all our knowledge is not going to help us in any case. It, it makes 
uh, life easier to understand what's going on and we are supposed to understand what's going on but in the end basically all you need to do is have faith in Jesus Christ that's all you need to do it's enough and that's the beauty of it all so you know you could go through these videos in my playlist and if you like this man's videos you can listen to more of them or maybe find somebody else that has gone through this process that can just help you deal with those um, emotions and just know that you know many of us have been through it it's best to walk this journey alone with christ the scripture said he went out um, he was crucified outside the city and that's a picture of basically leaving the camp um, of basically coming out of the organized church system and walking with Christ wherever he leads you as he leads you into more truth so we read here in Hebrews also about Jesus who it says he suffered without the gate he suffered outside the gate which is a type or a symbol of us and it says here in Hebrews 13 verse 13 let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach that's exactly the same as saying come out of her my people and often there is a lot of shame and reproach especially with our loved ones but we get through it and um, nowadays it's much less uh, shameful than many years ago so it's getting easier also the more of us who leave and because of the internet and the fellowship we can have there and yes it is lonely and don't feel bad when you want us to have some sort of fellowship so there are internet fellowships just be careful be very careful because the same type of mentality that you get in the brick and mortar churches also exist in internet fellowships where they basically shun you or they require you to believe certain doctrines and stick to them now you know it's it's such a fine balancing thing because if you allow all sorts of strange doctrines that's also not good but if you seek it's but basically best to just find the truth for yourself and let God teach you you can join in fellowships but don't throw yourself with your whole heart and soul so that when you need to leave when when you see something that and and you you know you bring it there then you've got to be now again thrown out and go through the whole process all over it's best to just be loosely affiliated you know um I think that's the spiritual meaning of the virgins that follow Christ. They they don't have a wife, you know, like a church or a fellowship is like a wife. And you've got to sort of care what they care about. If you really want to and are called to walk as a disciple of Christ, then it basically in the end means you walk alone. Um, and if you think about what Jesus actually did, you know, he sent the the disciples out to preach the gospel and Paul and then basically planted the churches but the system that Jesus had was basically what they have even nowadays still in the uh, amongst the Jews which is called the yeshiva which is a school where you get master and his disciples you see so in a sense when you um when you are part of such a, maybe an online fellowship where there's an openness, where there's maybe one person that knows a bit more, but is not going to lord over your faith and tell you what to learn, in that you can grow together. This is a very, very tiny little channel. And my goal here is to share my oil because the oil from the olive comes from crushing the olive. So when you go through the spiritual growth and suffering that this brings it sort of crushes you and also as you really look deep it, it just brings out the more you understand the more concentrated it is for example this 
that I've just shared with you. Where, you know, now we are not doing a study on all sorts of scriptures with baptism and laying on of hands. But I can just tell you, what does this mean spiritually? It means to be taught of God, not of men. This is what comes when we eventually understand this. And that is very, very valuable. Because when we start to understand these things, that is when we get to the beautiful unity we are promised. So this is what we are aiming for, is this unity of spirit in the bond of peace. But it's going to take work to get there. It's going to take us to take ourselves out of these systems and to really seek the truth. And then in the end, we will be unified because we will see the same thing. <laughs>